G'day guys, uh, Kiri Bohander here. Um, just want to make a little video for you guys, just sort of discussing some ideas about um, why it's good to have multiple knives. Um, mainly for the purposes of, well, potentially having to trade them for other items. If um, there was some sort of breakdown in society or long term disaster or something like that, um, and you might be cut off or need other things, just mainly for barter, if um, that's what you're into, like I try not to sell too many knives, um, mainly for that purpose, they're quite valuable, usually when you sell them, uh, you don't get, like right now you won't get a, um, a decent mark, or like you'll take a fair hit on the price you paid, um, trying to get it back, so, well you won't get as much back as you should, so um, I think it's personally worthwhile just to hang on to them. Um, so just some of this, these are just a few of the things I've got that I found. I just I'm doing some tidying up. Um, now this is this is my first hunting knife. My dad got me that for I think that was my 14th birthday. Um, it's a Moella. Um, I'm not sure on the model or anything like that. Um, I'll just get out of the sheet. Right. Uh, use my foot. There we go. Now decently knife. Um, it's the blade still wasn't the best, but it's strong as hell and um, lasts me quite a while. A bit of a prick to sharpen though, just because of the sort of the upswept. Well, not even upswept, it's just not the not a straight edge. Um, this one was a present for one of my buddies a wee while ago. Um, it was just sort of one of those birthday presents when we were a bit younger. So I know you like knives, so there you go. So I try not. I also refuse to sell presents. Um, that I get from people, it doesn't really matter what it is, but, um, so I'll be hanging on to that, but I suppose worst case I could either reuse it for something else, or if, if it was a dire situation I could sell it. This is my main belt knife, this is a Sford, um, which is a New Zealand, um, knife maker, um, it's a 370 BB is the model, um, I put a forced patina on it with mustard, just so it doesn't rust, um, New Zealand's Ford if it wants to focus on that, um, it's a good wee knife. Um, this is something called a Barco Wrecking Knife. Um, I got this from a hardware store. Um, just because it looked interesting. Because it's got like a chisel point. Um, if I can get it out with one hand. It's, this sheath has some quite good retention on it. Um, oh, am I going to be able to do that? There we go. Yeah, it's um, a really, really sturdy knife. This one actually needs a bit of a clean up and an oil. But um used this before to... Uh, is it like a sort of a rental survival knife if I take someone out on a trip? They're like, yeah, you can borrow this and chuck it on your belt. Wrapped in paracord and I've well, got some paracord wrapped around it and a bit of bike rubber tire and there's a fire steel in there and a little sharpening stone and a, that's just a leg strap I tied onto it. Just a cheapie that I thought I'd toss around with the potential idea of getting a few of them. Um, as giveaway knives for some buddies if we had a shit situation. This is a um, Mora that um, CJ sent me. Nice wee knife as well. Um, I'd take this when weight's a bit of a concern because the sword's actually quite heavy so I'll just chuck a little more on if I'm going for a hike or not actual woods stuff. I'm sure it's quite adequate for woods use but I just like my sword. It's a big full tang. Decently thick steel blade. Nice quality. Um, carbon, but the, the more is really good as well. Um, an old Fiskars uh, folding saw. I really didn't like that one, but I figured I, I think I only paid like eight or nine dollars for it in New Zealand, so not a whole lot. I figured I might as well hang on to it in case it might be worth something to someone one day. It was the first pocket knife I ever got um, from my granddad um, who died last year. It's a, I can't wait to focus on it, it's a um, straight old timer, just a single blade that's an upswept clip point sharp as hell I really like that knife it's made in like 1948 or something that was the first pocket knife I carried for yonks all throughout um, intermediate and high school intermediate I don't know what they'd be in for you Americans when I was age 11 to 11 and 12 just between like primary school which is when you're real young and high school um, my Spyderco Tenacious that's sort of a bit retired at the moment it's my old EDC knife got that one for this one for Christmas from one of my uncles um just a sort of a extra present in addition to the other stuff you gave me, but um, it's 
it says made in China on it, stainless steel, doesn't say a grade or anything, but it's a sturdy knife. Gave it a bit of a sharpen up, got a decent lock on it, um, so I figured I'll hold on to that. Uh, this is a Smith & Wesson, oh, shit, dropped it, um, uh, what's the model? Homeland Security, Urban Titanium Camo, it says on it. Uh, that was a present for, um, was it my 20th? 20th birthday from my buddy Craig that was in the M14 video. Um, cool wee knife. Carried that for a while. It's quite it's real heavy and real strong for a folder. I was quite impressed with that. A um, couple of those Victorinox Swiss cards. Um, uh, what I do? I lost something out of that one. And the little mechanism that held the little scissor thing that folds down on that broke, so I just duct taped it in place. Oh, I broke, it cracked as well, and my wallet got the sat on it a few times. Well, just because I kept my wallet in my back top, uh, back pocket, and over time it broke, but so it's duct taped because there's some cracks in it. Um, whole bag. Oof, Swiss Army knives. Um, I pick them up when I find them cheap. That blue one was the first Swiss Army knife I ever got. It's actually saved my skin once um, out on a boat in the dark. No life jackets. Yeah, I know that was pretty stupid. Out in the Marlborough Sounds hunting when I was about 14. Me and my buddy were um, picking up the um, flounder nets from the bottom of the bay. And we got them tangled in the um, bloody rotor on the motor on the little dinghy we were in. And completely seized the motor. And this is dark, we had no torches, uh, no cell phones, no nothing. We were kind of out there in our shorts and our t-shirts, just thought it was going to be a five minute job. And uh, ended up starting to drift out to sea. And if, for those of you that don't know, the Marlboro, this is in the Marlborough Sounds, um, which is before Cook Strait, which is the big like set of open water that separates the North and South Islands of New Zealand. So, and there's, you know, there's big sharks out there and all the rest of it. And we're kind of like, oh shit. And luckily enough, um, I had that in my pocket because I had it on a, um, a bit of string on a necklace around my neck and I was shooting my bow earlier in the day for target practice because we were up there bow hunting and it, it popped out of my shirt, caught on the bow string and ripped off the um, like the little bit of string that I had on around my neck so I pocketed it instead because I couldn't hang around my neck. Um, so luckily it was in my pocket in my shorts and we managed to cut all the um, net off the... Um, <clears throat> off around the rotor on the dinghy motor and um, that sort of saved us I suppose we managed to get back in because otherwise no one else knew we were out there uh, might have been a bit of trouble anyway I'll, I digress but it, yeah I just pick up Swiss Army knives when they're cheap generally um, I don't think any of those have been presents except for that blue one there the little SD which is classic which is cool um, and a little story behind it that you just heard that's a United Cutlery Karambit knife I carried that for a wee while just I don't know thought I'd try it out I carried it on the front of my belt um, sort of like that under my shirt because um, that way you can grab it left hand reverse or right hand um, just forward grip um, a Sejal Herbes folder that I picked up in New Caledonia when I was there the other year it's a really nice little knife picked it up cheap at a second hand shop and it was still new a little present one of my buddies brought back for me from the states when he was over there a while ago Monument Valley and it has my name on it um, and I got that one that was free with bunch of uh, medical supplies that I got a wee while ago and um, the guy sent that as a free gift gift in inverted commas um, but yeah just one of those little things so these are all sort of little bits that you can keep they don't take knives don't take that much room uh, you think about how much they cost now and how valuable they might be um, when you can't get knives anymore and how useful they could be especially little pocket knives um, everybody's friend even if you went and spent maybe $100 one time on a couple of $5 knives, you've got 20 little things to trade that might be worth quite a lot of food or batteries or, you know, any, any little thing. They're quite valuable little tools, as we all know, that are sort of of this mindset. So um, knives are a useful thing to have. You might as well have some extras that you can trade. Um, or worst case, you can just use them yourself. Um, you can't really go wrong with knives. But um, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and give you something to think about. All right, cheers. Bye.